Assemble the Religion <clears throat> conflicts caused many wars in history. In this era, how does your religion work to bring peace to the world? Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Alhamdulillahilladzi arsala rasulahu bil huda wa dinil haqq liyuzhirahu ala dini kulihi wa kafa billahi syahida Ashadu an la ilaha illallah wahdahu la syarika lah wa ashadu anna muhammadan abduhu wa rasuluhu la nabiya ba'da Berjumpa lagi dengan channel saya Mars Tehno Saya doakan semoga semua sahabat dalam keadaan sehat selalu Pada video ini kami akan menampilkan seorang ustad yang bernama Dr. Sabel Ahmad Beliau sedang memberikan presentasi tentang ajaran agama Islam Di hadapan audiens yang kebanyakan beragama Kristen atau Yahudi Nah sahabat mari kita saksikan saja video selengkapnya Dan saya akan sedikit mereaksinya All right, Islam 101 in three minutes there's a challenge All right. <laughs> First and foremost, I start in the name of God, the most beneficent and the most merciful, and greet all of you with the greeting of peace. In Arabic, it, it goes like this, Assalamu Alaikum, which means peace of God be upon you. So the basic tenets of Islam are four. The very first one is that we believe that there is only one God. And that God is a monotheistic God, that God does not have any partners, he's not one in three, he's not an idol, he's not a prophet, he's not a person, not an animal, but the one creator who created all of us. And in Arabic, we say that he is called as Allah. So, but when we say that he is Allah, we are not worshipping a different God. You know, just like in Hebrew, you have the name for God like Elohim, Jehovah. In Spanish, it is Dios. In English, it is the Creator. In Aramaic, it is Ilah. In Arabic, it is Allah. And we say Allah has wonderful names and wonderful attributes. We say that He is the Creator, He is most merciful, powerful, loving, guiding Creator. That's number one of the four, right? Quickly. Number two is that we say that God wants to guide humanity. So to guide humanity, He did not come down to become a human. But from the humans, he picked messengers and prophets. So one of the commonalities that we have between Judaism, Islam, and, uh, and the Christian faith is that we believe in almost all the prophets mentioned in the Old Testament. Prophet Abraham and Moses, Ishmael and Isaac, David and Solomon, all of them are mentioned with prestige, with honor, with love in the Quran. So we say that all the prophets that came to invite humanity to worship one God. So that submission to one God in Arabic is Islam. Number three, quickly, God sent revelation. You know, when we went to schools and colleges, there were notes the teacher gave or the textbook or the guides. So we say that God gave many books in the past. And the last book that he gave through Muhammad, peace be upon him, is the Quran. So in the Quran, you have guidance about how humanity should live with each other it has solutions for humanity and it has a pathway to paradise and last but not the least we believe that there is a day of judgment and then there is the hereafter so we say that one day all of humanity are we are all going to die but that's not the end of the existence according to islam god is going to bring us back to life so there would be a day of resurrection and a day of judgment you know, when we went to schools and colleges, at the end of the semester, there is always, uh, not a day of judgment, by the way, but, a, but evaluation by the teacher. So Islam says that the grand evaluation for all of humanity would be in front of God. God wants to see that how we are living this life. Are we good neighbors, helping humanity, worshipping one God, following God's guidance? If we fulfill that criteria, then by God's mercy, eternal paradise. And we hope and pray that may God help us and guide us so all of us can go to paradise. Amen. <laughs> Thank you. The second question is, and this is an interesting one, did people create God or did God create people? So when the question is that uh, did people created God or God created people, I would say neither. 
what I say is that not only God created the people, he created the whole universe. So I think that third option is the best option. So why do I say this? If I just stop at that answer, people may be thinking, you know what, Sabil, this is just a blind belief. So I want to add really quickly that the existence of God has evidence from the scriptures, obviously as we agree, from the Old Testament, from the New Testament, and definitely from the Quran. The evidence of God also has, a, so the existence of God also has evidence from logical and rational sources. I mean, we came here. We came, we came not by ourselves. There has to be someone who created us because we see design in the universe. We, we see design within ourselves. Number three is, even the science supports that there has to be a creator. I mean, I'm, my field is biology, biochemistry. So I say, especially to the youth, that every single branch of science points towards God. May that be cosmology, may that be physics, biology, biochemistry, any science that we take, it points towards a God. So I would say that not only God created the universe, there is ample reason that God exists. He's a loving God. He created us as brothers and sisters. He gave us the scripture. If we abide by God's guidance, inshallah, God willing, uh, we can live in justice. We can live in harmony, in unity, morality, and the outcome would be nothing less than peace. Thank you. Thank you. Next question, religion <clears throat> conflicts caused many wars in history. In this era, how does your religion work to bring peace to the world? All right. When I heard the question that uh, religion causes most of the wars and what, is, what does Islam say about how to bring peace, with all due respect, I want to correct the question. First and foremost, According to the Encyclopedia of Wars, there have been close to 1,700 wars in the history of humanity. Only 123 of them, only 7% of them, they were purely for the religious basis. Only 7%, right? So the question is not correct that religion causes most of the wars. Secondly, when we look at the wars, okay, the war of Ukraine, is it because of religion? I don't think Russia invaded Ukraine because of religion, correct? It's not it's just a geopolitical war. World War I, in which 13 million civilians died, it is not because of religion. World War II, 54 million civilians died, not because of religion. The Korean War, about 3 million people died, not because of religion. The Vietnam War, close to 5 million people died, not because of religion. Yes, there are some people on the basis of religion or they give the label of Judaism, Christianity, Islam, or some other faith. But even those wars, they are because of geopolitics, because of oil, because of greed, because of, because of uh, you know, historical vengeance. So minority of the wars, they are fought on the religious basis. Even those wars, if any Muslim is doing it, we want to condemn it. Because Islam is against you know, oppressing minorities, uh, killing people randomly. You know, it's, Actually, there is a passage in the Quran. I'm not sure how many of you have read the Quran. There's a passage in the Quran that beautifully mentions the value of every single human. So it says in the Quran, chapter 5, verse number 32, addressing to all of humanity, God Allah is saying that uh, saving one human life is like saving the life of all of humanity. And then it says, Taking one innocent life is like taking the life of all of humanity. That is the equality and the preciousness that God has given to every single life. So how we can bring peace? First and foremost, I would say, right, coming from the Islamic faith, that we have to acknowledge that there is a creator. And that creator, he loves us. He wants the best from us. And we have to follow his guidance. Secondly, we have to take each other as brothers and sisters. Not people lower than us just because they are of different faith, nationality and race and uh, economic status. Because there is a passage in the Quran, then I will end with this. There is a passage in the Quran, chapter 49, verse number 13. God addressing to all of humanity and then God is saying that, O mankind, O humanity, 
I have created you from one single male and one single female and made you into nations and peoples and tribes that you get to know each other. Not that you may hate and despise and discriminate with each other. God is saying get to know each other. Then God says that the best amongst you is the one who is a God-fearing, pious person. So if we live by that rule, worshipping the Creator, following His guidance, that's the way to bring peace. <laughs>